Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Before we get started with today's video, I want to remind everybody you can become a member to the channel for just 99 cents. The MVP, VIP, and Pro levels are all going to disappear on the 1st of January 2023, and all those perks will carry over to the 99 cent membership. It's a great way to support the channel and a great way to support the content you like. Now today, I want to go over something that got confused in a couple of my previous videos over the past four months. I did some coverage on SteamOS. Now, the SteamOS I was doing coverage on was the same version that comes out on the Steam Deck. I know everybody knows what the Steam Deck is, but I think some users and some people that watch the videos got highly confused because there is a SteamOS out there right now that you can download and install, but it is Debian-based. What is on the Steam Deck is an Arch-based distribution. It's got the Arch kernel, and it supports a lot more hardware. Well, there have been signs that this operating system is going to be coming to the desktop, and I covered that. But I did have most of my commenters say, well, there's already SteamOS, it's Debian-based, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. I'm going to repost some of the content from those previous videos so you can understand that this is the Arch-based distribution that's coming out on the Steam Deck or is out on the Steam Deck that will be coming to the desktop. And it's pointing in that direction because they've come up with a media creation tool and everything. So I'm reposting some of that information so you can actually watch it and understand that this is the Arch-based Steam OS that's on the Steam Deck, not the Debian that already exists. So... Take a look at this information because SteamOS Arch-based is coming to the desktop. Now, if you remember about three weeks ago, I did a video on the Hollow ISO. It's SteamOS 3.4, uh, Windows days are numbered. I had a lot of input on that. I had a lot of people saying, you know, it's for Steam Deck. It doesn't work with NVIDIA. It's not really going to do anybody any good until we have the ability to actually upload it and use it on our systems. Well, I was actually poking around in the repositories of Steam today and come across something very, very interesting. So let me bring that up. Let me close this and let me go ahead and maximize this. Now this is, if we go back here, this is the Steam Deck packages, Steam OS Cloud, and I'll show you exactly how you can find it. You can come up here and it's the Arch Linux Mirror. And then you want to go down to the hollow ISO, where's the H? And you want to go to the main. And then you want to go to OS. And then 8664. Now, if you come down through here, you don't see much. You got Calamares. You don't see anything that really, you know, puts the red flag up and says, hey, this is something to think about. And then you look over here, you've got August, you've got October, and you've got some more October here. But then you come down here a little bit further, and you see SteamOS customizations. And then you see this. This was just added on the 25th of October. SteamOS Media Creation Tool. This is going to give you the ability to, to create an image of SteamOS. This was put up within the last week. So what that tells me is that we're getting ready to have a desktop image of SteamOS that we're going to be able to install on real hardware. Now, the next question you're going to ask me is, well, what happens if you download it? Well, I did. I downloaded it, and it popped up over here, SteamOS Media Creation Tool. When I double-clicked it, it opened it up in the Software Manager. Actually, I right-clicked it, I'm sorry, opened it with the software installer, and what did it give me? Well, let's go down here, and if we go up here and we just type in Steam, there's Create Media, Steam OS Media Creation Tool. Welcome to the Steam OS Media Creation Tool. To begin, select the Steam OS image from your machine. So we're going to be able to download the Steam OS image and then we're going to be able to burn that to media. Now the next question is, is if I go back over to Firefox and look for the SteamOS image, it doesn't show. But if we go back to Hollow ISO, would it give us 
the actual ISO. There's hollow main. Let's open that up. OS 64. And it doesn't give us an actual ISO. You've got database. You've got files. But I do know this. There's going to be an ISO available. You do not create a media creation tool if you don't plan on releasing an ISO. Now, what do you all think? Does this mean that we're on the verge of actually having the Steam OS Arch version that they're running on the Steam Deck that we can create media for and actually put it on real hardware? I really thought twice about making this video, but because the last video got so many views, I wanted to bring this to you. Tell me all what you think in the comments below. Is this something to be excited about? Is this one more step towards complete gaming on Linux? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Hey everybody, I bet you're wondering why I'm at a Windows desktop. This is what you always hear. You'll hear it from Windows users, Mac users, and even some Linux users. There will never be a year of Linux on the desktop, ever. Nobody's ever going to leave Windows. Nobody's ever going to leave Mac. And most of the time when they address the Windows issues, it's always the same thing. Gaming on Linux isn't there yet. Gaming on Windows is just better. Well, I'm here to tell you guys today, the tide is turning. And it is turning heavily. I have been waiting to do this video for two months. Because my son and I ran a little experiment. Now, if you look at my channel... I have covered a lot of different Linux distributions. A couple of them that were gamer friendly, but I have never really covered gaming on Linux, ever. To the extent that I'm going to cover it today. About two months ago, me and my son started an experiment. We built him a brand new gaming PC. He's running Manjaro on his CyberPower PC. We went with mid-range specs just an amd graphics card amd ryzen 5 and we built it and we put something interesting on it what we put on it was the hollow iso now the hollow iso is basically the steam deck recovery image but what they do with it is they take a lot of the mandatory hardware requirements out of it and you can pretty much download the iso and then install it on any hardware as long as it's amd you can have some Intel. you got to do a little tweaking here and there with an, an Intel GPU. And obviously, NVIDIA is not in there. And all you do is you come over to this site. And I will go ahead and link that in the description below. And then right over here, you've got the ISO. And then you scroll down here. You've got source code. you got the uh, tar and zip. And then right here, you've got the hollow ISO.zip file that you can download and pretty much install on anything as long as you're not using nvidia or intel if you're amd you're gold okay you go ahead and download that and you can throw it onto a usb device restart your system and go through the install process now when you go through that install process it's only a three-step process you pick your drive you pick whether you want just the steam deck gui or do you want the steam deck gui and desktop GUI. What you'll want to do is pick both of those and then install it in your gold. You're ready to go. And those of you who know about Steam know that it has come a long way in the last 10 years. It's been around since 2012 and now we're in 2022. It's easy to get things set up. Back in 2017 though, you know, you had to have games that were specifically made for Linux until they came out in 2018 with the Proton layer which lets you pretty much play anything that you could play on Windows on Linux. Now, the success rate wasn't that great, maybe 50%, but now, today, those numbers have jumped. We're talking about over 90% of the games that you can play on Windows, you can now play on Steam OS on a Linux machine. The Steam Deck has been really exciting, but the announcement that they were actually going to switch their kernel over to the Arch kernel made things a whole lot easier for people because it gives you the ability to update your system a lot quicker. Debian sticks with the older kernel and Arch sticks with a newer kernel with a lot more hardware support. So that makes it definitely a must if you're going to use it in something like the Steam Deck. Now, getting the ISO image and installing this is simple as one, two, three. You just go in and type in hollow install. 
you go ahead and put in two, which will give you the deck experience. And then you enter your desired driver node. Once you're done with that, it'll install and you're going to come right to a beautiful game screen, log in, and all your games will be there. It makes things that much simpler. You can go in, pick your game, and get to playing, especially if you're on AMD hardware. Like I said, with Intel, you may need to do a little bit of tweaking. This is directly from my son's PC. He can play Red Dead Redemption with no issues. Now, I will say this. You're probably going to need to install your launchers, whether it be Rockstar, whether it be whatever launcher, game launchers you have, need to be installed through the Steam Deck GUI. But here's what I love. See right here where it says switch to desktop? Click that button and check this out. It brings you right to a Linux desktop. A KDE Plasma desktop, to be quite honest. And if we go over here to settings, you go ahead and click on that. And we will scroll all the way to the bottom and go to about this system. And it tells you right here, Steam OS Installer 3.4. It's using KDE Plasma version 5.23. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, and as you can see right up here, you can return to your gaming mode right there. So if you want to go back to the Steam Deck main screen where it's just the Steam Deck GUI, you click on that, it takes you right back over, you're good to go. You can power off or switch to desktop, and it brings you right over here, and you can get to work and do things that you may need to do on a desktop. You can come down here, and we go through the application launcher. You've got applications. You've got your development, onboard settings, plasma engineer, internet. You've got Firefox, or you can install Firefox. And then settings. And then system. You've got Dolphin, Info Center, console, system monitor. Then, of course, you've got your utilities right here. Mouse pad, emoji selector, spectacle. And let's go ahead. And if you want to change this up, you can change it like, let's see, show alternatives. We could go to an application dashboard. Let's go ahead and switch that. And then when you opened it up, you could come to an application dashboard. And then you have Discover Software Center. And just like Discover on any other Arch-based KDE distro, it doesn't play well. So what does that mean? You're going to have to install something like Paymac or something like that to handle your software installs. But the basis here, everybody, the basis here for a powerful desktop operating system and a powerful gaming system. What they've done is they've pretty much made a hybrid, put them both together, and made it possible to be able to have a gaming setup and then be able to exit out of that to a desktop and get real work done. Think about the power of that. Being able to get real world work done and being able to game on the same system. And it being Linux based and being Arch based. So you're gonna have the bleeding edge, you're gonna have gaming, and you're gonna have everything you need right out of the box to compete with a Windows PC. So at the end of the day, what does that really mean? It means that the days of having to dual boot in Linux and Windows are quickly coming to an end. You will be able to install a Linux operating system that is Arch-based, that already has SteamOS built into it with all the Proton compatibility layers and be able to play any game that you want on a Linux system. And it's all thanks to the hard work of the people over at Valve. They're making leaps and bounds in these steps to make sure it is a lot easier for us Linux users to be able to play the games that we love and not be trapped in Microsoft's crap operating system. Now, the Steam Deck is what is pushing all of this, of course. The Steam Deck, I think, is going to become one of the most popular handhelds on the market for the simple fact that there are a lot of people that have Steam accounts. They have games that they play on Steam. They have games that they play on their Windows PC. And they will be able to also play them on a Steam Deck, which is Linux-based. Now, with Hollow ISO giving us the ability to not only play the games that we love, but also be able to switch to a desktop and get real-world work done is astonishing. It is great. It is something that I believe is game changing for the Linux community and I don't believe people understand it or people know the importance of this it is important that Valve succeeds it's 
not so much that the Steam Deck has to take over market share. It's more important that the hardware does make a dent in the market, but at the same time, the software is what really comes out and comes above board and shows everybody, hey, I'm Linux, I can do everything Windows does, and most of the time I can do it better. Most of the games my son runs, runs between 70 and 100 frames per second, which is plenty for what he's wanting to do. So I think what we really got to focus in right now is the importance of what this is doing for us in the Linux community, and also at the same time kind of step back and look at all the work that's been done to make this possible. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation. Or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video. And I will see you in the next video.